tutorial um, that's been requested based off the um, one of the previous videos I made which was the 3d object tracking video um, and today I'll be doing tutorial on how to rec on how to create that effect um, I'll be using different footage this time um, but same principles and same process so it's all good all right so the first thing you're going to want to do is open up Cinema 4D, which I've done here. The second thing you're going to want to do is go into your Motion Tracker tab and get the Motion Track tool. Then, go to the Motion Tracker and go down to the Footage tab. Your footage. Got lots of clips in there from other VFX videos. You open up your footage inside of the motion tracker. You'll notice that it appears in your workspace. Now you, you can adjust where the uh, footage starts. So I don't want the beginning here. I want it to start when I get to about here, frame 148. You can also adjust the resampling. so that you get better quality but I'm gonna leave that for now um, so I will also change that on my timeline too 148 and 360 yep. okay so now you've got your footage loaded you're also going to want to make sure um, everything else is up to you what do you want to lens profile if you have anything like that um, but I don't, so that's all good. Alright, next, go to your 2D tracking tab in your motion tracker tool and go to create, um, sorry, not create, um, manual tracking tab, the manual tracking, because we don't want to do automatic um, tracks because this is object tracking, not 3D camera tracking. So go to manual tracking and we're going to create our own. Uh, tracks. So to do this, what you must do is click on your keyboard, um, control, and then click, and so control and left click, you'll create a tracker. So now you can zoom in and adjust the size of this tracker to your um, object. Now I'm using a face mask, which has tracking dots in it, and I made this mask myself took a while but um, it's it's definitely worth it so now you can adjust it and you can go to your manual track tab in your manual tracking and click the manual track button now you may require be required to change around the position as it's not always perfect depending on how good your footage is so I'll begin to manual track this It will be loading down there. You can see it says processing frame. It will go through from 148 all the way in to 360. Um, it doesn't actually show the footage up here on the workspace. It might for you. It doesn't for me though. Um, and what it will do is once it's finished, it will um, update the workspace and it will show you the trail that the tracker t takes. And I will show you what happens and what to do if your tracker goes off place once it's finished. Okay, so we're back now and the object tracking has finished. I have not tampered with it at all. I haven't changed it. It's just finished now. And let's have a look. So looking good, looking good. Looks very good actually. Wow, that actually went a lot better than I thought it would. Um, especially in this area I thought it would collide with the other dots but no it didn't that's actually really good alright but you can't just have one point when you're tracking you need more than one so we're gonna put another one in um, and this is where this kind of mask comes in to help um, it comes into play because there's all these dots and well they, they look same they look the same they're all different pixels and they will have different rotations and everything so it's really helpful and I, w I don't I don't think I'll run out of points anytime soon to track so that's really good 
All right, so we'll track this point here. Um, I just thought I'd choose that one. All right, so once you've tracked one point, it usually tracks the rest pretty quickly. So, yep, look at that, instant. And right now, oh, yep, okay, so I was about to say it's going really well until I lost it. All right, so if that happens, you just realign the tracking point and it will correct itself. So it's happened again. Um, and this is probably bound to happen with some of the other points as well. But otherwise, it's tracked really well. So that's really good. Um, we need about eight points, eight, nine points. Um, as many as you can get that are solid tracks. All right, so so we're finished now with the tracking of each point, and we've got pretty solid tracks for every single one of these ones, and they look pretty good. All right, so first, now what we're going to do is get all these points, and we're going to put them into the object tracker. So from zero to whichever latest point you have, select all of them and then go motion tracker object tracker and go assign selected so now all these selected motion track um, points have been put into the object tracker on here reconstruction and go run 3d solver there we go Okay, so that's finished now. Let's have a look at that. Looking pretty good. Looks great. Okay, so it's pretty solid. Orientation looks good. Looks all good. Alright, so now we can go here to the object tracker in our um, objects section and click the plus button expand and you can notice that we have all of our tracks here out of all 11 tracks we've only got two like ones that aren't so solid and two that are you know not so good but they're not as bad as these two and the rest are all great so that's good that's what we want okay so we've just run the 3d solver um, by going into the object tracker and pressing the run 3D solver for object. Um, so we've done that and we've got a successful 3D solve. As you can see, the 3D axis is in there and it's looking great. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do now is we are going to go to the object tracker, the size plus option, and you'll notice that the sizes are really big. So 1214, 832, you know, they're, they're just too big for what we want. So, what we're going to do is go to the object tracker. What you're going to want to do is get the vector tag down here. Where is it? Here it is. Motion tracker tags, vector constraint. Okay, I was thinking ahead for a second. The vector, con vector constraint is going to allow us to restrict the um, size of the motion tracker based on the actual size. So, if you know the size between your tracking points, then that's really good. Otherwise, if you don't, you'll have to estimate. So, I know mine is around, well, I've got the mask here, around a centimeter between each point, a centimeter and a half. So, what you do leave that, leave the axis, just go to known, thousand centimeters, no, mine's about one, one, maybe one point one centimeters between each point, and now what we're going to do is choose which ones you want, so I'm going to choose user 10, and user 1, because they were great tracks. 
Okay, that's done now. So now the sizes have been realigned, redone, and we've got a lot better sizes there. Four, three, and two. Great, that's definitely what we want. So now when you drag in objects and everything, it won't be so big. You can also do this with um with just 3D camera tracking as well, I do believe. Okay, so now that we've done that, you want to put something onto the um, person's, your actor's head or whatever you're tracking. So, <coughs> what we're going to do is, oh, that's actually still pretty big, it's because I'm zoomed in, probably. Alright, yeah, it's because I'm zoomed in. Let's create a null here, and with this null, we are going to call it whatever you want. Um, I think I have a model I made a while back. I'm gonna use something different this time. I think I'll use the gas mask I made. So with this, what you're going to want to do is drag this into your object tracker. Cinema 4D, character tags, and constraint. Now, turn on PSR position rotation go into the PSR tab in the constraint tag and drag the target as the object tracker so now you'll notice this takes on the position rotation and movement of the null of the object tracker sorry so now what you can do is drag in any object for now I'll just use a cube as an example So, wait a second, wait a second, okay, so, see, if you zoom in here on the top, you'll see, notice that that's where all the, um, the points are, you will want to have to keep your object within those points, otherwise you'll get terrible tracking, I didn't know that the first time I did this, and I was like, why is it, why is it not working, and that's why, make sure you keep it within the camera's the object tracker's points. Otherwise, you get terrible parallax, and it won't work at all. Um, it's looking good. I just really line this up, however, however, to fit my face somehow. No, oh, that's not working. Hang on. Ah, oh, it's because it's not in the null. Oh, look at that. That looks fantastic. Yep, that looks really good. Okay, so um, of course you don't have to use a cube. You can use anything you want. Um, as you can see, it's a bit it changes size a slight bit. It's probably because some of my tracking points are a bit off, but you can fix that if you want to. Um, this is just a quick tutorial, so I'm not going to fix that. But however, I will make it. I will do a render out of this so you can get the final result, and I will post that as a separate video. Um, now you may notice that you can't zoom out or anything. You're stuck in this. Just go to your motion tracker. Um, in the footage section, I had it. Um, in navigation, I had the scale set up to like 400. So it's a bit. Um, it's my fault there. Um. But yeah, so that's why. Um, now, if you render that out, you won't see anything. But what you have to do is go to your motion tracker, footage, and create background object. And voila, there you go. Um, so now I will put um, something onto there. So I'll actually put a gas mask onto there now, which I made a while back. Yeah, so hope this tutorial helped you guys. Hope you have a good day and night. Thank you for watching.